Hello everyone, I'm Dex and welcome back for another narration for the Colors Invitational main event, round 1. There's a match between Bruno and Jabba, Bruno using the username Giratina Pizza. He's also known as Anti and just been around forever. I guess not as long as Jabba who is one of the um, eldest veterans of Smogon and ADVOU and Colors Invitational even. So, really, really excited for this match, honestly. Anti has not historically been uh, a main ADV player, but he's just the kind of guy who is competent in everything that he plays. Uh, and Jabba probably definitely passed his peak. He definitely one of the, the best players in the site for a period of time. Uh, but nowadays, he only really comes back for um, ADV OU, which is his thing, his love, his passion. And... Yeah, um, let's just jump into the game. We see Tyranian turn to Zapdos, the most common lead matchup in the tier. They both know what they're doing here without needing to think. And we see a crunch into a baton pass into Metagross. That's, we see no leftovers and a lot of damage, so... I was gonna say it was an AB choice band, but that damage is definitely not choice band. Um, even against like super defensive Metagross. We see Zapdos switching back into... Uh, the meter mesh and a baton pass onto Swampert. So definitely defensive, protect leftovers Metagross. And we see Zapdos coming back in once again. Good double uh, by, by Jabba. He knows that Swampert is much more abusable than Zapdos. And he's just getting a lot of scouting in by doubling the Zapdos onto Metagross and Starmie and forcing in Blissey. So that's just the kind of offensive pressure that Zapdos puts, forcing the Blissey and yeah, from there you gotta find a way to abuse the blob. Uh, very standard team here from Bruno so far. Oh, as we see the deep Skarmory, so not so standard after all. And Hydro Pump miss, so I guess we won't know how offensive or defensive this one part is. Uh, we see that it actually is just a standard defensive part and a standard special defensive Skarmory despite having Thief. Uh, Starmie definitely would have been the preferred target for Thief there, but you'll take that on the Zwampert every day of the week. It's just gonna make this have no longevity, switching into Rock Slide, especially if you can keep spikes up. We see an insane play here, just going hard Tyranitar onto a Starmie that has been clicking Surf for the past turn. So, on point by Bruno, trying to get this time in a do or don't situation, Crunch versus Pursuit, you know that you don't die to a Surf. Uh, let's see if we can get the turn right. Because if his time is gone, then I really, really like his chances. And we see how much damage that Surf did. It's crazy that he just had the balls to switch Tarantar into that. And we see a Meteor Mash dodge onto the Flamethrower. And yeah, great play at first and then a lucky break. But both of those add up and massive, massive, massive advantage for uh, Bruno right now. Because now once the scammer gets layers, it, they're just gonna stay in forever. We see Celebi, Jabba is one of the biggest fans of offensive Celebi. Could either be a Tom Passer or a 3 attack one, also known as Super B. And we do see the HP fire and scammer probably just warring up? No. I guess you maybe don't even have it if you're running Thief Protect, right? Uh, we do see the Celebi go for another Cow Mine on the Tarantar switch. So this is looking like it could be a threatening Pokemon. We see Giga Drain there. We don't know if this Baton Pass lasts, but we do see a Flygon. And Choice Bandage Bug is a big threat. We do see that it's faster. And guess the one hit kill with Choice Band HP Bug. You have to assume that the Celebi was trying to Baton Pass those out into Zapdos. Most likely some small Baton Pass chain between those two going on over there. But... This is presumably just a Jolly Max speed. Um, Zapdos and the Celebi presumably has some bulk for Doug Trio. Uh, I meant to say Jolly Max speed flag on my bed. We see Zwampert forcing this out and a double to Zapdos, but at this point I don't see how Jabba could find a way to break through the Blissey, although his last Pokemon has to do well against it. And we do see that it's a Tyranitar, but there's a Flygon in the back. And Flygon looks incredibly threatening right now. I think you have the safety net, just always click Earthquake here, you don't need to make plays, you don't need to rock slide even if you know the Zapdos is coming, because with the spikes down, the Tarantar, like the sequence looks good for Jabba, right, but it just isn't, because it's just taking damage on the Tarantar, 
And if he can't weaken the Flygon, then there's not much that he can do. He has to keep going for those Rock Slides on the Switch, and then getting Zapdos on the Earthquake, and then Baton Passing on the Blissey until the Flygon's in Rock Slide range. And even then he has to hope that he's faster than Starmie with a Plasma Tyranitar. And all the time he's just taking that Spikes damage and Tyranitar not being leftovers here is really hurting it. There's also the full health Metagross which knows it's bulky enough to take a plus one Earthquake. So Jabba just couldn't keep up enough pressure on the Blissey with his, with his team of like special attackers plus uh, Tyranitar. And maybe if the Metagross had lived... Uh, hadn't missed the Meteor Mesh on Tyranitar, had gotten the kill there, it could always have threatened an explosion. We will never know how the game could have went. But as it is, it looks like Bruno is in a domination position and I don't think he will find a ways to lose this. I think he's just gonna pilot it safe and sound and ride this Blissey Flygon combination to victory. Uh, and yeah, that... The Tyranitar is getting low enough, that I was about to say, where HP bug just kills, so you get a small chip damage on Zapdos as well. I think we're getting to the point where... very interesting play there. <coughs> we're getting to the point where Tyranitar would just have to try to Dragon Dance up and go for the flinches. Uh, the Tyranitar could also just be dead to Seismic Toss here, but you don't want to risk your Blissey because... Zapdos is a threat, should you somehow let Blissey die, which Bruno obviously doesn't, he knows what he's doing. And as you can see, the Earthquake does no damage. It's a very, very bulky uh, defensive Protect Leftovers Metagross. And from here you could just blow up on the Zapdos if you want. You could just go to Blissey, I cannot see this matchup ever losing, even if it somehow this was a Cursed Swampert, doesn't have Leftovers. You just have enough offensive pressure to always close it off so honestly one one huge luck break for sure dodging that meteor mesh uh, but despite that I would call this a very dominating uh, performance by by Bruno um, I'm just gonna speed up a little bit because we're just going through the motions right now that Zapdos is never getting past Blissey that Swampert is never getting past anything because it's just a simple defensive Swampert Hydro pumps the Skarmory he gets another layer down, because why wouldn't he? He just goes Starmie now. We haven't seen what kind of Starmie this is. Okay, it is defensive as expected. Uh, we see a crit, so... Maybe he could get one more kill at best, but not even that, because the Zapdos will also die here. Uh, so yeah, 1-0 lead for Bruno, very, very dominating performance. And from here, let's just jump right into game number 2. Again, Bruno at the bottom, Jabba at the top. And we see the exact same lead matchup. Um, so on game one, we saw Zapdos Baton pass into Metagross and Tyranitar crunch the switch. Uh, that play probably mind of both players right now. We see another Baton pass into Metagross and we see a Rock Slide this time. So, I mean, I guess there is always a chance that Jabba is running the same or at least a very similar team. Could just not be Zapdos and Metagross, two very common Pokemon. Uh, but Empty definitely running something different or maybe he just thought about mixing it up and going for the rock slide instead of the crunch just to stay unpredictable we see jabba with once again very very well played so this is the same play that jabba made game one going metagross and doubling back to zapdos after a baton pass to scout uh, and this time bruno was just having none of it he just stayed in called the bluff uh, this could also indicate to me the possibility of a Doug Trio in the back, because it makes this much safer. If you feel like you get called on your bluff, Metagross stays in, kills you. You at least get a Doug Trio to finish off the Metagross, but he was clearly expecting the Zapdos, so very, very well played there. Um, I wonder what can I infer from those damages. The Rock Slide on Metagross look like... Not enough damage to be choice banned, but then again, he killed the Zapdos, so probably just an offensive Zapdos and a, a kind of bulky Metagross. Which we do see coming back in and Meteor Mashing a Suicune Switch. Gets an attack boost, threatening to explode here, uh, threatening Earthquake, which is a 3 hit kill. Which the Metagross is faster, takes the Surf, does not take that Surf too well at all. We do see that it's Protect though. 
bulky but quicker than Suicune with protect. That's interesting. We'll see a Fortress on the Earthquake. Fortress not really winning this 1v1. Uh, so maybe Bruno does have a Doug Trio in the back. Huh? Oh, it does win the 1v1 with counter. Not a move you normally see, but a good choice on Fortress regardless. Sometimes it just means that you're not making use of Rapid Spin. You maybe have another spinner. You may not care enough about trying to spin against Gengar because your Tarmenter is physical, he's on Pursuit. We see the Viper Inch coming up on Blisse, so... Normal Pokémon, but interesting Fortress uh, set for Bruno here. As we see Smirgo, now that is interesting. Mid-game Smirgo, I'm not even sure what it indicates here. Is it like a... Some sort of Baton Passer? You run like the mid-game Spike Smirgo? See the Spore coming up, getting the Suicune Punch to sleep, which is probably the ideal target because it's something that could easily find turns to wake up. And we do see the spikes. So yeah, the mid-turn spikes. The Fortress is really low. Uh, if Jabba wants to spin Fortress, he would need to go there now, but it does not. We do see that the Suicune is Sleep Talk, which is not particularly common. But, I mean, it's gonna put in the work here, right? Absorbing the sleep. And never making use of slip talk. So yeah, amazing move. We see the spore. I mean, what's this gonna do? It's gonna like just explode. It's gonna whirlwind. I don't even know what Swiggle could even do at this point. That would be relevant. The explosion does very little damage to Swiggle. But we do have three layers down. And a fortress that is low enough that it can't spin. Bliss is switching into an HP grass. Um... Probably expecting the Tarantar there. And we see Jabba revealing a Tarantar of his own. And with three layers down, Tarantar becomes a big, big threat. We see the Fortress sacrifice there. Very good play. The nice uh, a possible Dragon Dance for Tarantar, if that's what he has. And we see a Claydo. So Counter Fortress probably not having spin. Probably have a spin on Claydo. Do we see Bruno go for the Psychic on the Gengars? Which we do not. He plays it safe goes for the Earthquake with meets the Gengar. So this game is actually gonna turn out to be a, a nail-biter in the end, I feel like, because this Tarantar is just incredibly threatening if you can keep spikes down. See Blissey on the Wish. And at this point, even if you can't, the Dragon Dance it up. Oh, this is just playing dice. This is just playing dice. The Suicune, you don't even know if it's gonna stay up, if it's gonna sleep, it's gonna flinch. It stays asleep, gets the Sleep Talk, rest, not what you wanted there. Uh, this next Rock Slide could just kill. We see Double Edge that definitely kills. This Tarantar revealing that it doesn't have HP bug though. Just stays in Double Edge, the Clay though. Do you die to Earthquake? You just die to Earthquake. Wow. That Earthquake did a lot more than I anticipated. I guess just no bulk Tarantar. Or maybe even has some attack investment. The Clay though, we see an Aerodactyl here. Onto the Blissey. The Blissey is so low that it will die to Aerodactyl. The Clay though is not healthy enough. This could be an Aerodactyl in game. But Tarantar is at full health. And Bruno just has possible sacrifices. The spikes just add up. We see the Earthquake onto the Tarantar. This does give Clay though free leftovers and a free Psychic onto Gengar though. So I'm not sure, um, Jabba probably gonna have to flinch down this clay though, if he is to have a chance to win. Do we see a double into Aerodactyl? No, we just see a nice punch, we kills the Blissey, what's the last one reveal? Gengar, it's Gengar on Gengar, which one's faster? Jabba does have the fast one. But he can't kill, maybe if his Hypnosis Gengar, he could set up a really good uh, Aerodactyl end game. He can also just go hard Aerodactyl here, try to like chip down this Gengar into his own Gengar range, because Gengar is more likely to beat Clay, though. Or maybe it isn't, right? Because Clay, though, is low. If you can get this Gengar into HP flying range... The Nerodactyl could potentially clean up. We see a Nice Punch that does not do enough. We see a Thunderbolt. Jabba just... If he has HP flying, he has to go for it, right? We see a Rock Slide, so he probably doesn't have HP flying. Oh, I guess maybe he just has to go for the flinches on Aerodactyl. Does he get one? He does not get it, and Claydol finishes off. It's like, that was a really close game. Uh, the 
I'm not even sure if it is a double spinner. I think the Fortress just doesn't have spin. And the clay dodge to alleviate that, but still playing with three layers down and still beating the Tharmentra Rodactyl core with three layers down. That's pretty impressive. Really well played. Really cool series. Uh, really cool game too. So, hope you guys all enjoyed this. And I'll be back for more next week. Uh, yeah. See you guys. Goodbye.